So I finally, after two years, got PS5. And because I'm a PC gamer and I don't really know how to play with a controller, the first thing that I try to figure out is how to play on a PS5 with a keyboard and a mouse. And I spent a whole day on the internet trying to figure out the best way to do that. And unfortunately, there is pretty much not a single video that kind of walks you through step by step how to do it without at least one big problem. And so when I finally figured it out, I figured that I might as well post a video on YouTube for people who struggle with this thing like I did because I literally couldn't find a single video that walked me through step by step what I need to do without spending hundreds of dollars or without downloading 50 different things or um, losing a picture quality or whatever, right? This solution that I found out doesn't require you to buy anything and you do not lose any quality in the process. And so it's one of the best solutions that I found out. It's very simple. The whole setup takes probably less than 30 minutes um, and then you're good to go, man. So let's jump right into it. Let me show you what I did. So this is my new setup right now. It it has changed just a little bit in the last few weeks. So I got basically gaming curved monitors down here and here's my 4K TV that I currently have connected to PlayStation that I have right over there. And here is my mouse, my keyboard and my gaming keyboard or uh, gaming pad, game pad, whatever you guys gonna call it. Now let me walk you through some of the different options that I actually tried based on some of the videos that I've seen and why exactly they didn't really work for me. So the first one is using Zim Apex, which is this little device that basically allows you to connect your mouse, your keyboard and your controller to um, to PS4. And basically you can directly control your PS4 with the mouse and the keyboard. And, and there is a bit of a translation going on here in this device between the controls on a controller and how that kind of translates into the keyboard and the mouse. You have an app that you can basically assign different key bindings to different controller actions. And uh, it worked just fine on PS4 for me. Um, I've been using that for years and uh, it basically made it possible for me to use PS4 at all because I personally cannot use a controller. I, there's no way, I can't hit anything. I can't run straight. I just, I, there's no way for me to use it for 30 plus years. I've been a, a, a I've been a PC gamer only, and I know how to use a mouse and a keyboard. That's what I prefer. And just for the naysayers, I'm not actually using PS4 for any kind of competitive play or PlayStation in general for any kind of competitive play. Um, so this is just improving my personal uh, uh, a single player experience. So for those who are expecting videos like, oh, step number one, and don't be a little bitch. Well, this is not gonna be that kind of video. The only reason why I got PS4 and PF PS5 is to play some of those exclusives that I cannot play on a PC. And uh, for those, I just, I'm not gonna relearn completely 30 plus years of, of, of play style uh, to a controller when I just prefer to use a, a mouse and a keyboard, even if it's a little bit clunky. So yeah, Zim Apex, unfortunately did not work. Um, and that's one of those things that I was kind of disappointed, but at the same time, it's not really surprising since this thing was designed for the uh, old generation ones. And uh, unfortunately with the new controller and with some of the protections over there and the new design, it's just not working. I haven't really seen a video of anybody managing to figure out how to make this work, uh, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Connecting this directly to PS5 and then controlling the play PS5 with a mouse and a keyboard um, through uh, Zimp Apex is not working, unfortunately. Okay, second option was actually using Zimp Apex as well, but connecting it to a PC and using a remote play. So for those of you who don't know, you can actually use this app on a PC called Remote Play, Sony Remote Play, or whatever, PS5 Remote Play, that allows you to control your PlayStation with a computer. Unfortunately, it does not translate the commands to control the game through a keyboard and a mouse. So you have to figure out a way around that. And so, you know, one of the videos was actually showing a guy somehow managing to figure out how to connect the Zim Apex to the PC. And then through that remote play, he basically controlled uh, the game. Now, I tried it, it didn't work either. Um, and so unfortunately that didn't really work. When I connected the PS5 controller, my mouse, my keyboard into this, plugged it into the PC, it did not work. Now, next one was a little bit similar, um, but they were basically saying, hey, use the Apex, but instead of using PS5 controller, use PS4 controller. 
because, you know, I, this should have been working with PS4 controller version two. Um, and so try that. I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense. So I connected the old controller, PS4 V2 controller, and unfortunately it still didn't work. Um, I think for that, you would have to also go back into the game and actually play the PS4 version of the game. And I refuse to do that. I mean, I bought PS5 because of, you know, it supports 4K and, um, and, and, and runs faster and all these different things, right? I mean, you spend a lot of money on PS5, so I'm not gonna be using a PS4 version of the game. I, I, that's, that's one of the things that I, you know, draw a line, I'm not gonna do that. Another thing that some people recommended was also using remote play, but not actually use this. Um, and then somehow, you know, their mouse and keyboard was apparently working directly, which again, I have no idea how they how they did that. Um, they didn't really give any guide on how they did that. It's just, hey, it works, you know, you just plug it in and it's all good. Um, again, using remote play has a problem of its own. Uh, one of the main problems is the fact that I have a 4K TV. I like to look at 4K now that I have a, a PS, PS5. Unfortunately, the remote play only supports 1080p. So it's already going from 4K to 1080p. And then I have a 2K monitor that's ultra wide which kind of stretches that image into kind of 2K. So it's still kind of blurry looking anyways, and with the black borders on the side. So that one didn't really work for me. That I think I might have been fine with the black borders on the side and maybe stream using uh, 1080p. That would have been, I guess, not bad. Unfortunately, the fact that it's kind of compressing it from 4K to 1080p and then stretching into into 1440 resolution it's just not really working it looks blurry and doesn't look great so i'm not really going to be playing that and that's basically where i exhausted all of my options right all of the videos recommended at least one of these options and none of them was really working for me um and so i was like well let me just see and plug some shit in and out and and connect a few things and then let's see what i can get so now that we covered the things that did not work for me, let's take a look at the thing that actually did work. Um, so make sure that first thing that you do, you go into options up top here and you enable in the system, the remote play. So make sure that remote, remote play right here is on. Um, and then that's pretty much it that you, that you need to do as the setup on the PlayStation right here. Now we're going to pivot into what you need to do on your PC. So now with your PC, what you want to do is open a web browser and um, write PS5 remote play download. When you click on that, it takes you to a PS5 um, website. And when you scroll all the way down, you'll get to uh, this place right here that allows you to um, download the, the, the Windows PC and Mac version. Now, after you download that, you basically just install it, follow all the steps, blah, blah, blah. Not a big deal, right? Um, and then once you do that, you fire it up. And um, then it allows you to connect to your PlayStation. There's going to be a little bit of a step or two that basically allows you to connect the two. And uh, because we already enabled it in the PS5, it shouldn't be a problem. So for me, I just so for me, I already click on it because it saves the last PS5 uh, that you had in there, and then it opens up. Now there you go. So now basically, this is my PlayStation streaming on a TV, a 4K TV, and this is my remote play that basically displays exactly the same information. But we already talked about why this is nice, but it doesn't really resolve my issue by its own. So let's move on to the second step of this process that needs to happen before you can actually use a keyboard and a mouse uh, to control the game here on the TV, because that's what I want. I want to make sure that I can play on the TV at 4K using the PS5, but just make sure that I don't have to use a controller to do that. Now, let me show you quickly what actually happens now that I have remote play running. What actually happens when I try to activate the PlayStation on my TV with uh, with the controller, right? So if I'm trying to now get out of this because nothing is working on my remote play, I can't use my controller, I can't use my keyboard, my mouse, anything, right? So now I need to figure out, okay, how do I get out of here? If I press on anything and kind of activate the, um, the controller, it basically gives me 
kind of an error that I lost the connection to the PlayStation 5, which means that kind of the, 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 the PlayStation 5 took over um, and the remote play is no longer running, right? So really the only way for me to, to do anything in this is to figure out how through the remote play I can control the PS5 that's streaming on my TV. And so here's the second and probably the most important steps in this whole process is going to the uh, website. I'll link it in the description, www.rewasd.com. It will take you to this page right here. And then you basically download um, the free seven day trial. Now, if you want to buy it, um, this is where this is where you're still saving significantly more money than trying some of these emulators and 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 connectors and all that shit because seven dollars for this program i i'm definitely buying it um that's the investment for years to come into making sure that i can play whatever uh, exclusive games on ps5 with the mouse and the keyboard and so for seven dollars I, I, that's insignificant amount of money that's less than your starbucks order that you place three times a day i don't drink coffee though, so not for me Anyways, but for me, since I just wanted to try this out, I just went to download the free seven day trial just to figure out, you know, is this something that I'll be able to use or not? Because then again, nobody really explained exactly how this would work through this whole process. So there you go. You download it, you install it, just following simple steps. And then what you end up with is this. So let me try to make this kind of bigger, I guess. Um, this is the app. And to be fair, that's why I said that the setup will probably take around 30 minutes because when I first opened this up, I had no freaking idea what I'm looking at. And I've been around some of these apps that you kind of have to set up stuff. I have, you know, Cyborg uh, keyboard. I have Tartarus gamepad. So you kind of have to set up your key bindings and all that stuff. But this is a whole other level because what you're trying to do is to basically remap the controller bindings and how they will map to mouse and your keyboard. Now, the challenge is, especially with mouse, is how to make sure that the movements of the that the movements of the of the sticks translate properly into your mouse because if you want to be looking around properly i think that's one of the most challenging thing uh from this whole setup was how to make sure that everything translates properly into the mouse and how to kind of even navigate your way around this app now i will link a video in the description that i think helped me about 80 percent to get me there to basically kind of take me through some of the key steps on how to kind of set up the mouse and the keyboard as my default. I think I think the app kind of takes you through that when you start it. It kind of says, hey, I detected this mouse or this this name of an uh, of a peripheral. What is it? You basically say, oh, that's my mouse. And then, oh, I detected this. What is it? That's my keyboard. But then probably one of the best things to do is to merge them, which is explained in the video. And then it kind of shows you how to set up the 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 key movements for your mouse and that's this piece right here when you click on it it takes you to advanced and here you basically have to set up a few things you have to set up the acceleration of the mouse and kind of how it how it reacts then the sensitivity smoothing and a whole bunch of other stuff right i'm not going to walk you through that exactly i think one of the most challenging thing was to set up this right here i know it's small um, i'll try to blow it up a little bit so you can see it's basically how the movement of the mouse, you know, left, right, up, down, how that translates into the sticks on the controller. Um, and so that's the only one that's a little bit more challenging. But then again, in that video, it takes you step by step. And once you wrap your head around it, it's actually not that difficult. It's just looking into the, it for the first time. I was staring at it like a deer in the headlights. Um, and then when you get back, um, you can basically flip between mouse and the keyboard here. And then you set up your keyboard to mimic exactly the functions and the commands that you want to translate from the from the controller and so that's the second thing right then i think what you have to do at the end is actually apply uh the settings to one of the slots so i have it in the first slot it's been working fine for me and but before you do that before you apply it what you want to do is to basically launch the game on your playstation and then you want to start the remote play and after that, you'll apply the changes and then you'll see what it does. So step number one, fire up the game. I'm going to be uh, starting a Horizon Forbidden West. Um, that's one of the main things that I wanted the PS5 for is to be able to play Horizon. Uh, but there was no freaking way that in that fast paced combat, I'll be able to do anything with a controller. Now that the PS5 is running, let's start the PS Remote Play. 
So let's do that over here. Uh, connected to my PlayStation. And now I'm connected. There you go. You can see that mouse controller and a keyboard are connected. So that looks good. Um, everything seems to be stable. And so now I have everything mirrored, right? On top, I have the PlayStation 5 running at 4K. Down here is my PC that's running the remote play. And then right here, I've got the simulator. And then when I hit apply, it basically tells me here in a corner that the uh, settings were applied. And now when I use my gamepad to go up and down, you can see that it's controlling both the remote play and the um, and the PlayStation on the TV. So now when I go get out of, uh, let me say continue. There you go. And you can see that basically both of them are running at the same time. There is basically no delay. And the reason why there is no delay is because I'm actually controlling the PlayStation um, instead of the remote play. And so now, you know, if I control, if, I, if I'm moving, now I'm basically using my keypad to move left to right. I can jump, I can slide. I can do anything that I basically set up in in this little app it basically allows me to do everything crouch shoot aim and everything right so when i go with my mouse and i hit aim and then look around it allows me to do that so but i'm not like okay so now that i can play on the tv i don't really want to see this double so what the hell do i do with this and how do i stop controlling the game and actually get out because i'm on my pc but now my normal controls are locked up so the way you do that is basically do control alt and delete and when you do that it, it gets you to uh to this screen you hit escape and it basically stops it right so that's the quickest the quickest way to basically now i have my mouse control back and i'm back in windows um, but so what I did is basically minimize the window, make it like tiny or whatever, right? Make it super tiny and just throw it on my other screen right here in the corner. Like, I don't really want to be seeing this, but it needs to keep running for me to be able to control the TV. That's really my main purpose. And now when I, uh, apply the changes again, I'm basically controlling just with my mouse. I'm basically just controlling the TV. Yes, it's also controlling this thing here in the corner, but that's not in my field of view. I don't care about that. I can turn off this monitor, it's still gonna be running. Um, but yeah, there you go. And now basically everything is set up. I can continue using everything that I set up in the um, in the in this little app right here. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm already having a great time. All right, guys, so there you go. I hope it wasn't too complicated. It's basically, bottom line, it's two things that you need to have set up. It's your remote play, and it's this ReWASD app, and basically just make sure that you bind all your things properly on that. As I said, how you exactly kind of bind all these things, there is a video in the description that helped me significantly to do that. It's gonna take, it's a bit of an investment, you know, 30, 40 minutes maybe just to, you know, get around making sure that your uh, mouse sensitivity is, is, is good because sometimes you set it up the smoothness and everything, it's not, it's not perfect. But I managed to get it to the point where, you know, the response time is really good. The sensitivity feels really good. Um, and so it basically, you can still feel that you're not playing on a computer, but it's really close. So for me, that's good enough. I'll prefer that than, you know, relearning my whole uh, uh, gaming uh, uh, play style to basically figure out what to do with the controller. And um, yeah, that's basically it. I hope it helped. Um, if it did, leave a comment. If you liked it, then, you know, like the video. Um, if you have a different way to do this, let me know also so that maybe, you know, I can change this way um, so I don't always have to do kind of the same setup. But hey, this is how I figured out how to play a PS5 with a keyboard and a mouse. Now, if I wanted, I could also set up on that thing my, uh, my keyboard, but um, I'm not really using that. I have all the controls that I need on either the mouse or the gamepad. And so that's all I need, but you have the option to you know, set a whole bunch of key bindings on your keyboard as well. So this is it for me. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a great day. Peace.